This here is a display demo that we use for events to take the mystery out of an electric car um, to show that it's actually fairly simple to uh, wire up an electric car and uh, what, what all the basic functions and pieces are. Uh, if you want to start off, uh, here we have our little battery pack. Uh, this is uh, 24 volts. They're two little 12 volt batteries wired in series. We're eventually going to have our, our junction come up through a uh, fuse. Uh, that's just a device to cut off the power so that if there's too much current in the system, whether it be from a short or too much from the, the controller, it's going to blow the fuse and cut off the power from the system automatically. Eventually going to come through some junction boxes, just a, for display effect, the wire just runs straight through it. Uh, we're going to come up to emergency cutoff or manual maintenance switch. Uh, this is just a manual way of turning off the power, so if you're going to do any maintenance work on the uh, motor, the controller, or any, any sections of the batteries, you can cut that off and that will um, make it safe for working on the vehicle. Um, eventually going to come to a contactor. Uh, this is an electric contactor that uh, is driven off the, a key switch to apply power um, to the system. I've got the, the charger on the corner here. Um, this is just the, the 24 volt charger. comes into our little junction box. It kind of leads its way back into the, the batteries. But uh, it's just a battery charger, so as you drain the batteries, that's exactly what charges it up. Um, after our contactor, uh, the leads come into a shunt. The shunt is just a measurement uh, tool to determine how much current we're drawing through the system. Uh, you can hook up other devices to it and figure out uh, your amp hours or just your, your current that you're drawing through it. Uh, so it's just one of the pieces of a measurement tool. We don't have the actual measurement tool on here, but we can use our multimeter and see the, the measurement going across, so we just won't have the ratio of what the actual current is. Um, you have a motor controller that is essentially the logic box to how much power to apply to the, the motor from an input of a throttle. This is a twist throttle, but uh, it's the same thing as a throttle on, on a car. You hook it up to some sort of device to give it the input. Uh, then, of course, then the motor is also connected to the controller, and that's your, your spinning power. Uh, we have a little a box here for a key switch for our uh, ignition that, uh, that engages the system to turn on. Um, we'll just kind of do a little walkthrough here. Uh, right now, the battery pack is currently running at 27.5 volts. Uh, we currently have it on a small charger because the batteries are uh, uh, need to be replaced. Um, but uh, we have them connected to the little logic box here, uh, just a junction box. We put the batteries right on the cable as we'll get the same measurement, the 27.5 volts. And we can actually trace this power through the system on this uh, red wire here. We eventually come into a fuse. It's a little hard to get to the fuse, but here I can get to the edge of it here. So we still have 27.5 volts here. Coming through our uh, little junction box, we're going to have power on one side of the key switch and not the other, or not key switch, the emergency cutoff. So if I can reach behind here, I get our 27 and a half volts. It's currently engaged. I'll shut it off for a moment, just to show you it's not doesn't have any power, but we still have power on the opposite side. Here's the 27 and a half volts. So we put connection here. We engage this. We have our 27 and a half volts. The power continues on comes to our electric contactor. You can see we still have our power here, because we still have this engaged, but there's no power coming on the opposite side. This will engage when the key is turned on. I will go ahead and so we're going to turn that on. Turn that on, close the solenoid in here, close those little plates making the contact. So now the power continues on through the device, and now we have power on the opposite end. Uh, the charger kicked on, so it's actually a little bit higher voltage now. It's 29.3 volts. And that power just goes on to our shunt, so we can continue to read our 29.3. It'll come through our uh, shunt onto the other side. It's still going to be 29.3. Eventually it comes through the red wire up to our controller. 29.3. We have our negative lead, which is the, the black wire that comes to the top and then through our little wire here. It's just one long continuous wire to the controller. And, but the, the positive side is what goes to all the devices for our measurements in the display model. Some people put them on the actual on the negatives, but uh, either way, uh, depending on your controller's uh, uh, inputs, 
Uh, right now, the, the system's engaged. If we actually apply a twist to the throttle, we'll actually get current running to uh, our motor and, and spins at different RPMs, depending on how high you turn it up, engages how much power to apply to the motor. Um, we can see some of this uh, functioning uh, at work here. If we take a, a battery measurement at our controller, it was 29.3 before, so 29.3. As we apply more and more work uh, to the motor, it's going to drop the voltage down a little bit just because it's making the batteries work a little bit more and it's having to, uh, it's a chemical reaction passing that current out through its plates. And we see a little bit of a voltage drop. My arm's going to be in the way a little bit, but I think you'll be able to see this on the display. Let me if I go above. There we go. Yeah, right now we're at 29.3. As, as I increase the, the uh, RPMs of the motor from the throttle, we're going to see this drop down a little bit further, a little bit further, and a little bit further. So we'll, we'll get it up to a little bit of a speed. And we're at 27.3 volts. Go a little bit faster. And we're at 26.1. A little bit more faster, there's 24.9, and a little bit further, is 24.5. So you see, just as i driving along, you're randomly pressing on the throttle, and this is bouncing up and down all the time while you're driving. It's just a function of the batteries. They Under load, they drop down in voltage a little bit. It's perfectly natural. Um, if we can see the shunt in work here. And the shunt's working by measuring the, the resistance across a known wire between two lead points so we can see what the voltage drop is. That voltage drop tells us the ratio of what the amperage is. I just don't know the current uh, ratio of this shunt, but we can at least see it uh, functioning, uh, telling us a number value. I can hold it there with one hand. There we go. I had to put it to a millivolt uh, reading. It's currently measuring uh, point, point 0.1. Um, of course, I, I don't know what that is in actual amps, but it's only a small amount. As I apply more and more, uh, let me go up above. As I apply more and more uh, twists to the throttle input, we're going to get uh, higher RPMs and we're going to get a higher amperage uh, draw. So we'll see this number change. So as I increase this slowly, we see we're at 0 0.8. There is a point, or 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, 8, 2, 2, 2, 2, 1, there's 2.5, 2.4, at current, at the full throttle. And it just bounces up and down just like the voltage sag does on the battery measurement. This is doing the same thing, measuring a milliamp voltage drop. And that ratio equates to, you know, however many amps you're, you're drawing through the positive lead into the motor controller. And that's essentially the, the basics of the electric car. Of course, we can turn off the system. Doesn't matter how much you're going to press on that throttle, nothing's going to happen. We've cut the power off at this junction box. So right now, the controller has no power to it whatsoever. Um, but that's the, the basics of the electric vehicle's uh, components, uh, all in a little small display in a lot smaller scale. But uh, that's, that's all the basic components, so you can see that there's not a whole lot to this. A um, handful of wires uh, connecting all the little pieces together. They're kind of like a one long daisy chain. Connecting them all together, eventually coming to a controller, and that controller connects to the motor. And of course, you're going to have your transmission or you know your drive shafts on the opposite end of this uh, input shaft on, the, on a car, but uh, that's the electrical path that it's all following to apply the power to your motor. Um, I guess that's about it. Uh, if you have any questions, you can shoot them. And, uh, any comments on the, the video, we'll just uh, answer them as we go along. And if I get enough, maybe I'll do another video to go into answering some of those questions. So, hope you enjoyed the video.